We got into personal mixing uh, market looking at the solutions there simply because it's a great additional component to our vMixing system. vMixing system of course has the digital snakes, the console concept as well as recording. One of the key components missing in that is then the monitoring or personal mixing for, for musicians. Um, so we were able to go out, ask questions, talk to people that were using personal mixing systems, find out what they were enjoying or what they weren't enjoying. What we found in, is a couple things. First of all, the natural reaction when we asked people, so what would you like more in personal mixing was, oh, we'd like more channels. And that is likely because they were being limited to everyone sharing exactly the same sources. So if I have eight channels or 16 channels assigned, everyone in my band is looking at exactly those channels mapped exactly to the same knobs. So you could control volume levels. So in that way it was personal. But other than that, it wasn't all that personal in the sense that if I was a lead singer, I might be on button 14. My kick drum might be on one. So we asked musicians, okay, if you could choose what you wanted to listen to and in whatever order you wanted, how many channels would you look at? So when they mapped it out on paper and looked at it, we found anywhere from four to 12 channels is what most people landed on. Certainly there's some more and some less, but most people landed on the fact that they, you know, if they could mix what they wanted, they, they wouldn't have more than 16. Very typical. So we're able to design a system we're thrilled about that takes 40 sources, up to 40 different sources that can be anything you want them to be, and map that down, your choice, into any of one to 16 stereo channels or stereo groups. So if I want myself as a singer or guitarist, all, always could be channel one. I no longer have to share channel one with everyone else. So when you look at an average user, say a person coming in who's uh, maybe a novice, not very comfortable with knobs, they maybe have just themselves, maybe one or two other knobs that they're controlling, everyone else. Um, if I'm, like I said before, the drummer, now I can spread 8, 10, 12 mics out all over my mixer and then just be left with everyone else on the remaining knobs. And you get the idea of, as a group the, the unprecedented personalization that can happen with our new design. The component parts of the personal mixing system start with directly connecting with an M400 mixing console or a digital snake. That's essential to pass audio and the multiple channels of audio. The key pieces though of personal mixing system really consist of First, the S4000D splitter and power distributor. This supplies not only all the audio data to the personal mixers, but all the power that's required all over a very convenient Cat5 Ethercon cable. Kind of the hub at each musician's station, uh, maybe one or two musicians may share, is the M48 Live personal mixer. This is a 16 group stereo mixer. So we have eight encoders on the bottom here, two layers, one through eight, nine through 16, that gives us our stereo groups. Nicely lit encoders that control whatever function that you have pressed here. So for example, volume is pressed now, the encoders are changing the volume level. If I hit pan, I'm now controlling the left and right pan of a particular stereo group. The EQ on here allows you again to tweak the highs, the lows, or sweepable mids for each stereo group. So that gives you unprecedented um, sound quality and control over your, your content uh, and your audio sources coming through. If I want to isolate any particular stereo group, I can hit the solo button, hit a couple buttons, and really tweak a particular source uh, or, or group. We can also add reverb send. This allows any particular stereo group to be sent reverb, which is especially powerful for vocalists. To be able to use in-ear monitors and place themselves into the size of room they would like to be able to get that good feel and blend as they sing. In addition, 
For that extra added level of comfort, we have a built-in limiter that will protect the musician against sudden volume spikes that inevitably happen. We can see on the back of the M48 personal mixer that we have a lot of choices when it comes to connectivity. First of all, looking at headphones, we've got a quarter inch option here, as well we have an eighth inch option. You'll notice too that there's an attenuator right here that allows us to control the attenuation along with the volume knob on front. This allows an unprecedented number of earbuds and head headphones to be used with the mixer. Beside that, we have the line out. These are balanced line outs that allow you to connect to subwoofers, powered monitors, wedges, whatever would augment your headphones, or perhaps you'd run to wedges on their own. In addition, you can see beside that we have a little mini jack record left and right out that can also be used for recording to MP3 players such as an RO9HR. This is, uh, helps a lot in rehearsals and just playing back what was coming through your particular mixer. You've got an ambient mic here. This is particularly powerful uh, when it comes to working with musicians on stage. You don't have to take your earbuds out when someone comes up to talk to you. You can just turn your ambient mic up here, listen to them, turn it off again, or maybe leave it on just to get a feel of the stage sound or even the room sound. So a very handy feature here. Auxiliary in, great for plugging in a metronome or perhaps some other uh, source that you want to listen to and mix into the primary mix of just your mixer, of course. A little dimmer light, which makes it great to turn down the lighting setting in uh, dark theaters and music theater and orchestra pits and, and the like. Last but not least, we have the REAC EtherCon connector here. This is just a Cat5. This transports your 40 channels of audio as well as the power that is used to drive the whole M48 live personal mixer. In addition to what the musician control, can control themselves, the system is really supported by uh, personal mixing management software. That can be in the M400 vMixing software, or it can be in a PC if you're running digital snakes. In the case of the M400, that may be from the front of house console, or it may even be from a, a, a monitor console, again an M400. In any case, the system management screens allow you to set up each particular unit that's connected. It sees all of them automatically. You can name them. You can tell each one what knob controls what sources. You can control levels. You can name them. You can store them, recall them, as well as being able to recall memory here. You can recall it from there. The front of house engineer can see the knobs that are tweaked. He can mute. So there's quite a lot of flexibility in who actually wants to control what's happening in the mix. Equally, with digital snake systems, you're able to use other consoles, perhaps another analog console, another digital console, depending on what type of snake you're using, will allow you to tap into all the same functionality, but in this case you're using PC software to control the management of the personal mixing system.